Tech Plants, one of the most important types of bases on Araxis. This is Heisenberg, and today I am continuing my video series that covers attack and defense battle plans for bases in planet side, with the primary goal of increasing the quality of battles in Genudine. Not only do tech plants provide a faction with the means to pull main battle tanks from locations other than their warp gate, but they sit in strategic three-way lattice junctions where battles are likely to occur. While each tech plant has different surrounding terrain and bases, the facilities themselves mostly remain the same, and I hope this guide helps you plan your next engagement. With the exception of Esamir, every continent has three tech plants, each corresponding to a warp gate. When you begin your battle on these continents, you start with a tech plant. Factions joust for these facilities for the victory points to deny their adversary ease of access to main battle tanks and for bragging rights. Tech plants themselves are the closest base in planet side to a city. The central capture point building is built in a gothic cathedral design and has surrounding smaller buildings. The spawn room, the SCU, and all shield generators all have their own structures, and other buildings are present that may be used to your advantage in the battle. Furnace buildings with chimneys and a guard shack dot the landscape on one side of the tech plant. The affectionately named banana building links to the SCU room between the spawn room and the only doorways available to earthbound attackers without a gate shield diffuser. Several silos dot the landscape around this hotly contested area, and two vehicle ammo towers stand on either side of the central alley. The spawn room itself resembles the old warp gate design, with many terminals and a second story. Inside the central structure, there are two internal floors plus a balcony inside and outside, two external floors, and a top floor within the tower, technically creating a sixth floor facility. A teleporter and an elevator grant you access to the top floor with aircraft terminals and multiple anti-aircraft and anti-vehicle turrets, though some tech plants, or MAO at least, have been modified so that anti-vehicle turrets are not bombarding surrounding bases. The next floor down is the top floor, the primary aircraft pad. Friendly pilots often use this to reload or repair. Below that is the lower roof, typically used by enemy galaxies or Valkyries to allow reinforcements access to the elevator, and the galaxy's weapons may be used against vehicles from here. Defending light assaults may also use this to attack enemy armor and spawn options, as until you begin your flight, most enemy forces cannot target you, and especially when fully upgraded, drifter jets allow you enough time to move to your target and then drop and detonate your C4. Below that, the outer balcony may be used to allow aircraft fire into the building, and may be used by aircraft to drop off reinforcements. The inner balcony is typically used to allow for an excellent field of fire on the majority of the capture point area. The capture point floor includes a large cannon that may be used as cover, and a small maze that allows you plenty of cover around the capture point, but also provides a ball neck for grenades and C4. Light assaults can use this feature with devastating effect. The capture point floor and bottom floor are often where the majority of fighting takes place. Unless the shield generators are destroyed, the only option that enemy infantry leaving their sunderers have is the two doors on the spawn room side of the tech plant. While you may engage attacking forces en route, and it is good to control the outside vehicle terminal, and you will want to defend the SCU if the cap timer falls below 50%, you will want to concentrate your fighting within the facility. Many players do not know about the tunnels, but from the spawn room, you may use these tunnels to send forces to the banana building the guard shack, and most importantly, the cap point building itself. This can be blocked on one end by an attacking GSD Sunderer, but with rockets the defenders may remove it. Also, defending forces may use the legs of the tech plant to set up fields of fire on enemies taking cover just outside the entrances. As a defender, the best option is to have a spawn Sunderer inside the building, and to fight the attackers at the entrances themselves. If this is not possible, intercept as many of them at the stairs as possible, and beyond that, having mines nearby the point, as well as a group of friendly forces defending the point itself is a good idea. You will want to place most of these friendly forces on the balcony overlooking the point, so as to avoid C4 from light assaults and for maximum coverage of the point area. In the background, you see me attempt a Sunderer placement trick. You can theoretically place and deploy a Sunderer on the top floor, however, it is a very tricky maneuver to mount the staircase, as Razor Chassis is required for this trick, and you will have to hook a front wheel on the next staircase. I have only seen this attempted in combat on Genudine once, and the driver gave up halfway due to time constraints. And after trying it, this is why I deemed it impractical, it's just simply too much time when there's an enemy force attacking, or they're about to attack. 
If you want to see someone do it, someone placed a guide on YouTube that I will link in the description. There is an alternate Sunder replacement as well near the main infantry entrance that allows Furies or Kobolds to cover the doors. For Sunder replacement, one may be placed by the banana building and though it is vulnerable to light assaults, it is relatively shielded from the road. One may also be placed near the furnace buildings, but in the end, when placing a Sunderer, you need to know how much your forces control the battle, and you need to take into account the surrounding area, and consider options that place your Sunderer outside the immediate vicinity of the central building if the battle is too dangerous for closer options. Tech plants, as they are found in different types of terrain, in different areas, on different continents, should be taken case by case, and having plans specific to the tech plant you are attacking if you see a fight there coming up will help you take it. As a defender, you will want to start captures at all bases connected to your tech plant once you make the save. All tech plants are only connected to single point bases, allowing a single stalker infiltrator to flip the point while your forces regroup and push out. However, remember that all bases connected to tech plants also have vehicle terminals with access to main battle tanks, and the armor battle is not over. Expect enemy vehicles en route to your destination. When the battle is not at the tech plant, it may also still play a major role in the battles nearby. Not only does it allow for vehicle staging and for aircraft pulling, but it may be used as an anti-aircraft position with high ground, and skilled pilots may use the vehicle bay to repair amidst a dogfight. Tech plants are very important facilities, and if you and your squad or platoon know what they are doing, you can gain an edge over your opponents in these common battles. I hope this video will help you in your next battle here. I'm Heisenberg, and I'll see you at the next base. Oh yeah, there's the